Hello, and welcome to BPW Transpix series of online training videos. In this series, we'll be taking a closer look at the critical maintenance requirements for the BPW products. In this episode, we'll be looking at the correct setting and maintenance of the BPW automatic slack adjusters, as fitted to BPW drum brake axles. The correct setting of the automatic slack adjusters is critical to achieving the correct brake performance and longer brake component life. Remember that BPW automatic slack adjusters do not set themselves automatically. They just automatically keep the initial setting done by the mechanic. If the initial setting is incorrect, the automatic slack adjuster will faithfully try and keep the wrong setting resulting in an unsafe braking situation and potentially reduce brake component life. The BPW automatic slack adjuster can be identified by the extra lever that projects out of the side of the slack adjuster. This lever is known as the brake control lever and is integral with the slack adjuster, while the other side is bolted to the S-cam bearing support. The brake control lever slots into the brake reaction bracket, which is bolted to the S-cam bush housing. This means that when the brakes are activated and the slack adjuster moves to rotate the S-cam, the brake control lever will remain stationary. The front of the slack adjuster contains a large rubber dust cover which covers the adjustment bolt. When the brakes on the vehicle are activated, the pneumatic brake cylinder pushrod extends and pushes the slack adjuster in the direction of the red arrow. The brake reaction bracket is bolted to the S-cam bracket so it does not move. And as the brake control lever is held in place by the brake reaction bracket, it remains stationary as well. This means that as the slack adjuster moves, the brake control lever does not, changing the angle between the slack adjuster and the brake control lever. Every time the brakes on the vehicle are used, a little more of the brake lining and a little more of the brake drums are worn away enlarging the gap between the brake linings and the drums. So every time we brake, the automatic slack adjuster needs to move a little further and the S-cam needs to turn a little more. It is this extra travel that the automatic slack adjuster needs to take up. The automatic slack adjuster does the brake adjustment by measuring the angle between the slack adjuster and the brake control lever as the slack adjuster is activated and turns the S-cam. When the movement of the slack adjuster causes the S-cam to turn more than 17.5 degrees, the brake control lever activates the adjustment lever, which then turns the coupling sleeve. The coupling sleeve turns the worm shaft, which does the actual adjustment of the slack adjuster. This all means that the automatic slack adjuster needs to be set accurately to ensure that the brakes operate properly and that you achieve the maximum brake component life. The automatic slack adjuster has two settings that need to be performed. First, we are going to set the air gap between the brake shoe and the brake drum, and then we are going to set the point at which the slack adjuster does the actual readjustment after 17.5 degrees of camshaft rotation. To do the automatic slack adjuster setting, we need a calibrated tape measure, a 19mm socket or ring spanner and a pen and paper. Park the vehicle on level ground and chock the wheels. Release the vehicle's brakes. Measure the distance, B, from the centre of the S-cam to the centre of the clevis pin. Record this measurement. There are five holes in the automatic slack adjuster, giving a potential measurement for B of 120 millimeters, 135 millimeters, 150 millimeters, 165 millimeters, and 180 millimeters. Now we measure the distance A that the clevis pin moves when the brakes are activated by hand. Place the tape measure end flush with the booster face and measure the distance to the center of the clevis pin. Pull the automatic slack adjuster by hand to the end of its travel and measure the distance from the face of the booster to the new position of the clevis pin. Record this measurement. The movement of the clevis pin 
A should be between 10% and 15% of the previously measured height, B. Here the clevis pin is fitted to the third hole from the S cam at 150 mm. Therefore the travel of the clevis pin A should be between 15 mm and 22.5 mm. Always set the travel in the middle of the measured range, so here the clevis pin should move approximately 19 mm. With the five holes in the automatic slack adjuster, the approximate distance that the clevis pin should move when activated by hand is for the 120 mm hole, A should equal 15 mm. For the 135 mm hole, A should equal 17 mm. For the 150 mm hole, A should equal 19 mm. For the 165 mm hole, A should equal 21 mm. And for the 180 mm hole, A should equal 23 mm. If the measured travel of the clevis pin A is not correct, then the setting of the automatic slack adjuster is not correct and it will need to be readjusted. The actual readjustment of the automatic slack adjuster is done via the adjusting bolt located under the rubber cover. Unclip the rubber cover, then using a 19mm socket or ring spanner, depress the adjusting bolt sleeve and turn the bolt to increase or decrease the clevis pin travel, A, until it is correct for the clevis pin hole used. Refit the rubber cover. This means that we have now set the correct air gap between the brake linings and the brake drum. Now we need to set the point at which the automatic slack adjuster does its readjustment to keep that gap correct. The actual readjustment of the brakes with an automatic slack adjuster is done when the angle between the brake control lever and the slack adjuster body exceeds 17.5 degrees. So we now need to set that adjustment point. The adjustment point is set by changing the position of the brake reaction bracket which is bolted to the S-CAM bracket. Loosen the two 30mm bolts retaining the reaction bracket and rotate the brake control lever around the S-CAM until the arrow indicator on the brake control lever aligns with the indicator on the body of the automatic slack adjuster. Retighten the two 13mm bolts. The automatic slack adjusters are now correctly set. Reapply the vehicle's brakes and remove the wheel chocks. There are two tests that can be done for the automatic slack adjusters. The test for correct brake adjustment and the test for correct slack adjuster operation. Correct brake adjustment. With the brakes released, check that all the indicator arrows on the brake control levers line up with the indicators on the slack adjuster bodies. If they all line up, then the brake adjustment is correct. Check the state of the brake linings and the brake drums and reapply the brakes. Correct slack adjuster operation. With the brakes released, use the 19mm socket or ring spanner to turn the adjustment screw two full turns anti-clockwise. This will open up the gap between the brake shoes and the brake drums. Now apply the vehicle's brakes 10 times. The automatic slack adjuster should return to the original positions with the position indicators lining up again. Any slack adjuster that fails to return to its original position is faulty and must be replaced. The orange lever on the side of the automatic slack adjuster is a brake lining wear indicator. The indicator starts vertical and then as the lining wears away the indicator moves through 90 degrees until it lies horizontal. When fitting new linings loosen the nut holding the camshaft, rotate the indicator until it is vertical and re-tighten the nut on the camshaft. The indicator will then show you exactly how much lining you have remaining. Automatic slack adjuster maintenance The correct adjustment of the brakes on the vehicle is one of the items that must be checked during the vehicle's first service. This first service must be carried out when the vehicle has covered between 1000 and 5000 kilometers. Please consult our latest operator's manual or visit our website at www.bpwtranspec.com.au for complete information on the first service for BPW axles and suspensions.
The automatic slack adjuster should be checked for correct operation every 12 weeks that the vehicle is in service. Grease the automatic slack adjuster with BPW Eco Plus Long Life Grease every 12 weeks for long distance haulage and every 4 weeks for short distance haulage. Open the rubber cap and apply new grease via the grease nipple. Allow 10 minutes for the new grease to push the old grease out of the area around the adjustment screw. Wipe the old grease away with a rag and refit the rubber cap. If the rubber cap is left open, then dirt and moisture can penetrate the mechanism and jam the automatic slack adjuster. Applying new grease via the grease nipple without opening the rubber cap will generate pressure behind the cap, which will then pop open during operation, allowing dirt and moisture to penetrate the mechanism. Thank you for watching this video on the setting and maintenance of BPW automatic slack adjusters. Don't forget to watch the other BPW Transpec training videos in this series. For further assistance, contact your nearest BPW Transpec representative.